The grading groups feature is a handy Schoology tool that allows you to differentiate assignments and or easily manage multiple sections of the same class. Grading groups are essentially another way of organizing your classes instead of running separate multiple sections. But before you use them, it's best to weigh various organization options, which we will look at in this video. But first, let's explore how to create a grading group. To begin, go to one of your Schoology courses and visit the Members tab. Students already need to be enrolled to be put into a group. So if they are not, you can use the Add Members button to add them or simply give students the access code to join your course. Once you have members or students in your course, hover in the Organize Members into Grading Groups area and choose Add Grading Group. This will bring up a list of all of your enrollments. Simply title the group and select its members. When done, choose the Create Grading Group button. To create another group, simply repeat the process. If you want to edit your group or add more members, use the gear icon by the grading group and choose Edit. Select or deselect members, or you can edit the name of the group and then again choose that Create Grading Group button. As I create grading groups, you can see that corresponding tags attach to the members in my class list, so I can easily see what groups each person or student is attached to, and each member can be a part of more than one group. In addition to using grading groups to organize students into different skill or topic groups, I can also use grading groups to organize my students by class period if I teach multiple periods or blocks of the same class. Let's say I want one big umbrella class for all of my 7th grade language arts students. I can use grading groups to sort students by period. And if I delete a grading group using the option under the gear icon, it only deletes that grouping arrangement, not the actual students or members. Now let's look at how using grading groups applies when you're assigning work. Let me go into this demo folder and create a discussion. I need to fill in all the usual details, but if you look in the advanced options, you'll see three dots that represent the individually assigned feature. If I choose this feature, I can individually assign this to one student, or I can type in the name of one of my grading groups. Now only the students in that grading group will see this discussion. I would love to have a duplicate button, but to make a copy of this discussion for my other groups, I'll usually save the item to my resources and turn right back around and import it into the same class. I can then edit this item to assign it to a different grading group, and I can even alter options like due date. In this scenario, period 1 will only see the first discussion, and period 2 will see the second discussion board, which will prevent my discussions from getting too large with too many people. There will be several assignments, however, that I want all of my students to complete in each period of my classes. In that situation, I simply create the assignment, and I will not assign any particular grading group to it. This way, all my students will see the assignment, and they will all be able to submit their work in the one Dropbox. Now let's visit the gradebook to see how grading groups look in the gradebook. When I enter my gradebook, the list defaults to all users, but I can use the drop-down menu to filter by grading group, which makes it easier to transfer my grades into Canvas. So that's how you use grading groups in a nutshell. Now I'm going to transition into the topic of whether you should use grading groups versus separate courses. How you end up organizing your classes is going to be a matter of personal preference and trial and error. Sometimes I prefer running completely separate classes, and sometimes I use an umbrella course approach with multiple grading groups inside it. Let's say you're running three different reading groups in your class, and each group is reading a different novel. Let's say Stuart Little, Frindle, and Shiloh. You could have one class with three different grading groups. And in this class, set it so that the Stuart Little group only sees the Stuart Little discussion, and the Frindle group sees only its discussion board, and so on. But all three groups see the Dropbox to submit their chapter questions. However, if those chapter questions are all different, 
or if pretty much all of the assignments among the different book groups are different, it doesn't really save you any time to use grading groups because you always have to remember to individually assign every discussion and every assignment to each group. So if the assignments and content differ greatly from novel to novel, I'll usually just run separate courses, one for each novel group, or maybe use different folders, one for each novel. However, if we're all reading the same book and I just want to differentiate some of the assignments for my ALP learners, it's going to make more sense to have one course and use grading groups to give my ALP learners a different task. Now let's look at a secondary example which uses grading groups to simplify the process of keeping multiple sections of the same course updated. Right now if I teach 7th grade language arts periods 1, 2, 3, and 5, I'm probably creating content like tests, quizzes, and such in one class and then copying it to my other sections or class periods. But if I find a typo or want to make a change to an item after I've copied it to my other class periods, I'm going to have to fix that typo five times. Instead, I can set up one seventh grade language arts course and create grading groups for each block or class period. And if I'm on a block schedule and have different due dates for the assignments, I can create two duplicate assignments and use that individually assigned feature to use grading groups to give each class period or block the correct due date. Grading groups can help streamline multiple sections of the same class, but be aware of the limitations. Right now, the Dropbox does not have a nice sorting feature for grading groups, so you can't easily filter submissions just by first period if you only want to grade the first period class's work. But you can assign a grading group after you collect assignments as kind of a workaround for this. So let me demonstrate. Here's an assignment I gave to all of my course members. As you can see, it's already been turned in and the due date has passed. If I just want to grade one class period or group, I can use the edit button to edit the assignment and temporarily assign it to one of my grading groups. After I click save, I now only see group one's submissions. But don't worry, all of the other student submissions are saved and still there. But now I'm just looking at group one's and can quickly grade those. When I want to see another group's submissions, I just re-edit the assignment, take group one off, and add in the new group. Or if I want to just return back to seeing everyone's submissions, I just remove all grading groups listed under that individually assigned area, click save, and they all return. This workaround works well for assignments, tests, and quizzes, but not discussions. If you individually assign grading groups to a discussion after the fact, it does not filter out discussion posts from anyone who has participated in the discussion, even if they're not in the assigned grading group. So if you want to separate discussions by grading groups, you need to do that as part of the discussion setup before students post in it, not after students have already participated and posted on the discussion board. Turning grading groups on and off for grading might be too clunky for some who prefer just to run separate classes since it is pretty easy to copy content from one class to another. But grading groups are a really nice tool for differentiation and workflow management. Grading groups are a relatively new feature, and I'd really like to be able to not just view my grade book by a grading group, but also export my grades by group. So perhaps these requested features will be added soon, but for now, just give them a try to see if you prefer to organize your content into separate Schoology courses or into one big Schoology course differentiated with grading groups.